Adhikarna 4. Guiding Deities Doubt With regard to flame, etc., the doubt arises as to whether these are marks on the path, or places of experience, or the conductors of the souls moving forward. Opponent As to that, the conclusion to be arrived at is that the flame, etc., are merely descriptive marks on the path. For, by its very nature, the instruction is concerned with such landmarks, as it occurs in common experience that when a man wants to go to a village or a town, he is instructed thus, You should go to such a hill, then to a banyan tree, then to a river, and then you will reach the village or town. So also it is said here, From flame to the daytime, from the daytime to the bright fortnight, and so on. Or it may well be that these are places of experience. It is thus that fire, etc., are associated with the word world, as for instance, he comes to the world of fire, Kausitaki Brahmana 1 3. In common parlance, the word world is used with regard to places where the creatures experience the results of virtues and vices, as for instance, the world of men the world of mains, the world of gods, Brihadara Nyakopanishad 1.5.16, and so on. Even in the Brahmana text, they get attached to the world of days and nights, Shatapata Brahmana 10.2.6.8. Hence, the flame, etc., are not the conducting deities. Besides, these cannot reasonably conduct the souls, as they are insentient, for in common experience it is the intelligent men, employed by a king, that escort others who have to be guided along inaccessible roads. Vedantan. To this we say, Sutra 4, Ativahikas Talingat. These are Ativahika, guiding deities. Tat lingat, because of the indicative mark to that effect. Translation. Flame, etc., are conducting deities, owing to the indicative mark to that effect. There must reasonably be conducting deities. Why? Owing to indicatory mark to that effect. Thus the text, from the moon he reaches the deity of lightning. A superhuman, literally not belonging to Manu's creation, comes, and he escorts them from there to the world of Brahman. Chandogya Upanishad 4.15.5 reveals this escorting to be an established fact. Opponent. That sentence cannot go beyond what it actually states. Vedantin. Not so, since the attribute that is to say, superhuman, is meant simply to deny the assumption that this being is human, literally belongs to Manu's creation, which might arise from an already established fact. The adjective superhuman placed before being for the sake of ruling out human guides becomes justified if sentient beings are already known as guides in the flame, etc., and these are also understood to be within Manu's creation. Namaste. So the soul, after leaving the body at death, goes through a series of worlds. These are not only worlds, they are also populated by deities and their servants. These deities, either directly or through their servants, become the conductors of the soul through that level. Now remember, here we're talking about the path of the sun. So this is about the enlightened souls who have realized the conditioned Brahman, 
the qualitative Brahman, the secondary or inferior Brahman, as it's sometimes called. And this is the spiritual world, the pure creation, as it's called in Lakshmi Tantra. That part of the creation where the upadis, worn by the beings, are pure. What does that mean? They don't have any sinful inclinations or actions, or even thoughts or words. They are pure. They are realized. They are in quality one with Brahman. But there might be just a little bit of individual ego left. So they go to the spiritual world, the part of the creation that exists for the entire duration of the universe. And there they really, I mean, they have a wonderful existence of beautiful pastimes in direct relationship with God and goddess. So this is the destiny of the realized souls. Most realized souls will realize the conditioned Brahman. It's very rare that within human life, someone experiences or realizes unconditioned Brahman. Because really it means the end of individual existence. So they don't go on any path. They don't go anywhere. They simply disappear. They dissolve into the omnipresent Brahman. That's all right. Uh, they are fine. <laughs> but the majority, I would guess 90% or more of the realized souls, take the path of the sun and they go to the spiritual world. Now, you know, I have a long standing policy on this channel that I don't talk about things I haven't experienced or realized. And this is no exception. If you see on the cover picture of this video, the thumbnail graphic, this is an experience that I had and continue to have since 1975 or so. That Shiva, in the form of a lion, came to me and has become my constant companion, my dear most friend. So how is this possible? Of course, he can do anything. <laughs> and interestingly enough, I came to this temple and there is a beautiful deity of this very same god or goddess. He has both a male and a female form as a lion, half man, half lion. That is the body of a human with the head of a lion. So here in the temple, we have a deity of the female version uh, of half man, half lion, Narasingha. Now, usually people know Narasingha as a Vishnu incarnation, but in this case, he is a Shiva incarnation, and he comes to those particular souls who are destined to become his intimate companions, and he befriends them and becomes their closest friend for life, actually forever, huh? until the end of time, to quote a commonly misused saying uh, with regard to love affairs. So it is not that any human relationship can last until the end of time. Only a relationship with God or goddess. So he or and she <laughs> expand in many forms to be in intimate relationship with their devotees. And this relationship can have five forms. Neutrality, servitorship, friendship, parenthood, 
and conjugal love. But this is one of the great truths which is very esoteric and little known outside of certain bhakti communities. That one can have this intimate relationship not only in servitorship, but even in friendship, which is equality, parenthood, which is superiority, and conjugal love, which is the most intimate relationship one can have with God. So this relationship is pure in that there is no selfish desire on either part and is full of humor. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's such a joker. <laughs> and it's full of beautiful pastimes of love, completely selfless and ultimately devoted because nothing can break up this relationship except the end of the universe at the end of time. And then, or even before then, one merges into the primary Brahman, the Nirguna Brahman, and attains complete self-realization. So this is what we have to look forward to. When we become self-realized, is not only that we lose all of the causes of suffering in this material world, except the little bit of conditioned life in the form of the body, which has to hang around until its karma is exhausted. Now, why did God make it like that? Well, who is going to teach the next generation of devotees? Who is going to give the knowledge by which one can attain jivan mukta for oneself? There has to be a class of people who are liberated, but still within the material body. That's the jivan muktas. And they go around <laughs> and they seek out those who are capable of a similar attainment, and they coach them, they encourage them, they teach them, they do whatever is necessary, because this is the one thing that is most pleasing to God. And why is that? Because of another very confidential truth, that the purpose of this universe, the purpose of the creation, is for Brahman to realize himself, to know himself, to see himself in the pure mirror of the purified hearts and minds of his devotees. This is a very confidential truth, and it is known only to those who have attained pure devotion. But to them, it's obvious Huh? Because why else would God go to this trouble of creating this whole universe and then residing within it in innumerable forms and having deep, close relationships with his devotees? There is no other rational reason why Brahman, uh, Nirguna Brahman, the one, would become many. It is only out of deep love for his devotees. Aum Tatsa. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namashibaya.